4.5. Our objective is to solve quadratic equations by finding square roots. We're going to start off by reviewing how to simplify a square root. Some examples are here that should look familiar. So let's start off with square root of 80. What I think the easiest way for simplifying a square root is to make a factor tree. Look for things that multiply to give 80. Then look for things that multiply to give 2. There aren't any. Things that multiply to give 40. And so on until you get to all prime numbers. At that point, you look for pairs. Because to simplify a square root, you find pairs. I've got two twos. I've got another two twos. And I don't have two of anything else. In fact, I ignore the 4, the 8, the 40, and the 80. Because they've all been factored already. You don't want to use them twice. So what happens next is I say, okay, I have two twos, so I write a two. I have another two twos, so I write another two. Then I had a five left over. Anything that's left over stays on the inside. Clean that up a little bit, and you're done. Part B is a little bit more involved, because we've got a square root times a square root. But that's actually just making the problem a little easier. Because if those numbers were already multiplied together, we'd have more work to do. As it stands, we just do a factor tree for each. And once again, we look for pairs. I have two threes, so a three goes on the outside. I don't have two of anything else, so I have to put the two and the seven on the inside. And then I'm done with that one. Part C, that one's actually super friendly. We get to split this up into two square roots first, square root of 4 over square root of 81. And square root of 4 we should know is 2, and square root of 81 we should know is 9. We get to stop there. There's no more work to do. We would reduce the fraction if we could. Something similar on part D. Split it up into two square roots. Square root of 7, even a factor tree is not going to simplify. Square root of 16, we know is 4. And we're done. It's kind of your intro to simplifying square roots. Now we just have to look at the tricky stuff. Before that, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do that later. Example 2 says rationalize denominators of fractions. We actually aren't allowed to have square roots in the bottom of our fractions, otherwise the number is not considered simplified. One of these we saw already in geometry get rid of a square root of 2 on the bottom, we multiply top and bottom by, think for it, if you've got square root of 2, you're right. You just match the bottoms. We end up with 5 times 2 is square root of 10, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is really square root of 4, but square root of 4 is 2. The shortcut for that, and the whole point of multiplying by this, is those numbers should all be the same every time. At this point, we would have to simplify square root of 10 if possible, but it's not possible. Now for something new, something called a conjugate. That's how we deal with the square root on the bottom on part B. If you were to try to multiply top and bottom just by square root of 2, it wouldn't work. You'd still have a square root of 2 on the bottom. If you don't believe me, try it. You'll see it pretty fast. Instead, we have to multiply top and bottom by 7 minus square root of 2. The way this always works for a conjugate is we change the sign in front of the square root. Keep the real, keep the whole number the same. The 7 doesn't change sign, but the square root of 2 does. Now let's see why this works out. On the bottom, you're going to multiply 7 plus square root of 2 times 7 minus square root of 2, and you'll get 49 minus 7 square root of 2 plus 7 square root of 2 minus 2. What happens to the middle? This happens every single time you multiply by a conjugate. It disappears. So how many square roots do we have on the bottom? None. Which is what we were going for. The top we just distribute. 3 times 7 is 21, minus 3 square root of 2. So we end up with 21 minus 3 square root of 2 on the top. 40 mi 49 minus 2, which is 47 on the bottom. If we were able to reduce this, we would. But nothing goes into 21, 3, 
and 47. 3 goes into 21 and 3, but 3 doesn't go into 47, so we can't reduce this. We're done. Conjugate is a big idea. We're going to be using it a ton in this chapter, so don't ignore it. Next up, we're going to solve an equation with a square root. Before I start, I pose this question. What does b equal in this problem? If you think 0, you're right. This process only works when b equals 0. We'll look at what to do when b is not 0 later on. It's called completing the square. For now, things work out nice. Divide by 3. Take the square root. And you have to say plus or minus. If you don't understand why we have to say plus or minus, let's think of a simpler example. x squared equals 9. If you just say x equals 3, you're only getting half the story. 3 times 3 is 9. Yes, that is a correct solution. But negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. When you take a square root, you have to say plus or minus. Back to the original problem. If we stop there, we're not quite right. We have to simplify the square root. Go ahead and pause the video, simplify that square root, see if you get the same answer as I do. Then we're done. Next up, a multiple choice. If you're scared of that one-fifth, just make it go away. Think about what you can multiply both sides by to make that one-fifth go away. Multiply both sides by 5. You'll be left with z plus 3 equals 35. z plus 3 squared. We can take the square root of both sides at this point and get rid of the square symbol. Left with z plus 3 on one side. Left with square root of 35 on the other side. Kind of. Think about what I left off. Plus or minus. One more step, we subtract 3 from both sides. And we have our two answers. Looking for those answers on here, we just got to make sure we choose the right ones. Looks like it's C. At this point, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own, or you can do them later. Okay, hey, before you pause the video and try this on your own, I have to give you a formula that there's no way I would expect you to know. This is the formula for how high an object is after you drop it. H stands for how high it is after t seconds. H0 is the initial height. So try to figure out what H0 is and try to figure out what H is going to be when it hits the ground. H0, again, is our initial height, so if you thought 50, that's great. We want to know when it hits the ground. Hitting the ground means our height is 0. Which really means we're just solving this equation now. Go ahead and pause the video, try to solve for t, and throw out the answer that doesn't make sense. Go ahead and use a decimal for this answer, since it's a word problem. Decimal's okay. We get plus or minus 1.8 seconds. We throw away the negative answer because it doesn't make sense to say that the A hits the ground negative 1.8 seconds after you drop it. 1.8 seconds is the only answer that makes sense. Go ahead and pause the video and try these, or you can do that later. Other than that, we are done with this lesson.